What's up, what's up, what's up, my chatterboxes? If you guys haven't done so already, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to share my videos on all your social medias. Share it to all your friends. I really, really would appreciate that. So let's just get into the messiness of it all. This is my review for Love at the Lockup, Season 3, Episode 13. Put a sweater on it and chill. So we're going to start with Maurice and Jessica. Maurice and Jeff Jessica. Well, first we see Maurice. We find out that Maurice is off of... He has restrictions for parole, but he's allowed to travel back to Vegas. He um, can stay in one month increments, and then he have to go back and report to the um, PO, and then they got to give him another pass where he could travel back um, for another month um, time span. So, I mean, you got to take what you can get. And them allowing him to stay a whole month, that's not too bad. He just got to go back to California report and get another home page and come back. That's not too, too bad or whatever like that. So, we learn in this, um, with the, these two, Maurice and Jessica are expecting a baby because she tells him that she has been, you know, feeling, you know, nauseous and everything for the last three weeks. He was like three weeks, and you just telling me, oh, well, because first he was like when she went, um, when he first came in there, he was like you were supposed to be naked, you know. Why well, I got it, you know. He wanted some, you know. He wanted some, you know. You know what I mean? But that's when she was telling him that she was sick, and she, you know, had to tell him some stuff. So he wanted to take um a picture of the pregnancy test, and once it came out positive, and send it to everybody. And Jessica like, no, 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 I gotta let my um. We got to go to the doctor. We got to find out if I'm truly indeed pregnant. And then we can start telling people. He all hype and all excited. Because like he said, you know, it was hard for him watching his daughter grow up through pictures. You know, he was in jail. He wasn't able to provide for her. And this will be different. He's got a wife. You know, they more, well, she's more settled. And he was, he said the only thing that um scares him is the, he need a job. And that's what I'm saying, like. I understand, you know, you came home and you, you know, want to have sex with your wife and stuff like that. But I feel like y'all should have been um, careful when y'all was having sex because he is in no way, shape or form ready to be having no baby. A baby right now. I mean, although babies are blessings, we do know this. They just not ready for no baby. And Jessica, Jessica need to understand that that babe, the weight of that baby is going to be solely on her financially if he don't get his shit together and get it together quick. See, what you should have did was allow him to get on his feet first before y'all took the condom off. But no, y'all had to, you know, do what y'all did. Now y'all bringing a baby in the world. And I hope, you know, things work out. She looked like she come from, you know, um, some good stock, maybe the dad own a business and he can hire him on or whatever like that so he can get some money in his pocket. Because one thing for sure, two things for certain, that baby coming, like I said, babies are a blessing and y'all got to provide for it. And that's just how it is. You know what I mean? And it wouldn't be fair for her to have to do everything when she was doing everything when you was in jail. Because Mar I like Maurice, but Maurice seemed like a bit immature to me. And I just couldn't take my eyes off that fake... Um, Gucci shirt. I'm like, where the hell did he get that at? From the swap meet? Like, where do they sell those shirts at? I'm confused. I like, I don't see them when, I mean, I wouldn't buy no crap like that anyway. But where do they sell those shirts at? Like, <laughs> oh my goodness. That just threw me for a loop. But, like, Jessica even said that she was, you know, a little hesitant, you know, about the baby because they only been together for like a month in the free world. And she don't know how her parents are going to take the news. Well, listen, they either going to accept it or reject it. And guess what? If they reject it, you still got to do what you got to do for your baby. It, it just is what it is. So either they jump on board or they jump off shit. But guess what? The damage are already done because that um, pregnancy test said pregnant. And once you go to the doctor and get it verified and if you have a successful pregnancy, that baby coming. That baby coming. And then I did see somewhere on social media saying that they have a son. But I, I don't know because, you know, they haven't. They're not going to show that on TV. But like on, on one of the um 
the you know the um pages for that you know how you read the comments and stuff somebody said that they actually had a little boy so i don't know if that's true or not but hey the baby here so that so now we got destiny and sean and sean is one stupid mother effer okay he is stupid okay i'm sorry i ain't no man i ain't no man could be that well let me take that back. I was about to say, I ain't no man can be that stupid, but we're going to take that back because we know they can be real stupid sometimes. Anyway, it it shows all, it shows us the scene um, of the last episode before they went on hiatus when she punched him in the face. So he in the car talking to the producers, talking about how, you know, he hate to leave her like that, you know, them fighting and, you know, listen. She just put her hands on you. She just sucker punch you. And you going to sit up there and, and and say you really didn't want to leave your own life leaving like that. You should have been telling her to pack her shit. And when you came back, you didn't want her there anymore. So he gets to the garage and he talking to Hector. So you know Hector already called his, his behind stupid. So he thinking, he's telling Hector how he think maybe if she meets Kelly, his um, ex, that he or she'll realize there's nothing between them two. And Hector was like, listen, you left one crazy for another crazy. He was like, they both, you know, they, bo they both crazy. And he, he said, with her, you you willing to risk $50,000, the relationship with your kids, the relationship with your ex, all because of her. Because you know he was telling Hector how he has to go to sex. If she don't go to Sacramento for court, He's in a hole for the fifty grand. Hector said, "Well, you was he basically you was stupid for even um, putting yourself in that situation." But did y'all peep? I don't know what was on Hector head, but he had some black electrical tape on the top on his head covering the words or whatever. I I don't know because at first I thought it was a mag a, a mega head, but those heads typically red, right? Because that head was uh, had a red um, brim with oh, a black cap part. So I don't know. It might maybe it was some kind of um, profanity or something that um, we TV did and went shows on TV. But I, I did peep that. I'm like, well, what the hell is going on? So anyway, Sean was saying how he loved her and you know he still want to go through with the marriage. So Hector was like, you really want to marry her? Like you really think that that's a good idea? He was like, well, I'm hoping you know the proposal will change things between us. I'm like. Oh, okay, Sean, you really dumb. Like, you really dumb. You, you're you really stupid. And this is my whole thing, because we see Destiny on the phone with her um sister talking about she ready to go. She was like, I can't be with nobody that's a liar. And he don't realize that I'm real life crazy. You know, life too short. I can't be putting up with all this crap and all this. And then she had a nerve to sit up there and say, not to the sister, but she going to say she had his credit cards and she could do what she want with him. Your ass will be in jail, honey bun. Your ass will be in jail. This is my thing. Destiny all harping over Sean saying um, she don't like a liar and all of those stuff. But Destiny, you lie. You was about to creep with the girl in the furniture store. He don't know that you like women. You have been lying your little ass off too. So how are you mad because... He's talking to his ex. Come on, he shouldn't be talking to Kelly. Well, why can't he talk to Kelly? Because he has six kids by Kelly. That is going to always be a relationship between him and Kelly. Um, rather is just amical with them raising those children. Or even if he did from time to time. It's always going to be something. You knew he had children. You might not know how many children he had, but you knew he had children. You're, you can't come in between it. And... He's so stupid, he might let you come in between that. But if he do, karma going to bite his ass. Karma going to get him too. But my thing is, you are out of line. You are very selfish to think that his life supposed to just around you and you only. He has six kids, a, uh, a child mother that he has to co-parent with. You is a druggie from out of prison. Who the hell you think you are to be making all these demands? You came with nothing but your damn ass, okay? That's all you came with, a bag and ass. So who the hell do you think you are? And you, uh, Sean, you need to stop giving her that power over you to make her think 
that she can control everything. See, you allow her to have that kind of dominance over your life. Because I would have let that girl know, listen, the same way I found you, I can find another. Get your ass out of here. That's what I would have did. Child, that burned me up. Then we see that when he comes home from work, her ass ain't there. He looking all through the house, look like a, saw, a sad puppy. Destiny, Destiny. Destiny wasn't, well, from what we see, Destiny wasn't there, okay? So we don't know if she just around Vegas swiping his credit card or if she took her sister up on her offer and said that you're more than welcome to um, come back home with family in California. We don't know. But what we do know, if he can't find her and she don't go to court, his ass owe 50 grand, we know that. And you have children, so you should not have even put yourself in that situation to have a, um, a, a $50 um bell over your head that you can risk losing when you got six goddamn kids you need every dime you can get you stupid ass so now we're going to just get scott and Lindsay out the way so we see them in the car coming back from i guess the parole office where Lindsay is now on home monitoring i think they said for about two weeks she got to be on home monitor because of the covid so she ain't bitching and complaining and talking about like she feel like she's still in prison. She can't go nowhere. She can't do anything. Well, listen, it's not like your freedom has been restricted for no reason. You broke the law. These are the consequences of you breaking the law. So we not going to, I don't feel sorry for you, Lindsay. I don't. Okay. Do the damn two week on house arrest. Do what you got to do. So. You could be off of it. It's just that simple. You was in fucking jail for all that goddamn going long. What's two more weeks? Like, come on. And we learned, um, Scott tell us that, you know, they, he has been still sleeping on the couch. Lindsay, Lindsay ain't give him no, no, no cookie. I don't think Lindsay is going to give you no cookie. Scott in the car chewing gum with that lip all inflamed, like, Oh, that would gross me out. There's no way I'd be sitting up there letting that lip touch me in any capacity. Any capacity. And he just, just a chewing, just a chewing. I'm looking like, oh, man. And, the, and it looked like the lip was getting redder and redder and redder, uh, more puffy. I'm like, oh, that shit grossed me out. So she was on the phone with her daughter, Molly Grace. And Scott was saying how, you know, Molly Grace is number one in her life, which she should be number one in her life. That's her daughter that she kind of fucked over by going to jail. She should be number one in her life. But it seems to me that Lindsay is number one in Lindsay life. She ain't putting nobody else before her own selfish ways, because if she was, she wouldn't have been in the trouble that she was in. OK, so. Scott is trying to get out of the doghouse. So Lindsay doesn't know that he he arranged a surprise where Molly Grace is going to actually come and visit Lindsay, but she got to stay outside. So they're going to talk through um through the door, and I feel like that's a good gesture. That's a good you know th that's a good initiative on. Scott's part because he knows that the little girl is important to Lindsay. He knows that. Um, Lindsay is important to the little girl and he trying to, you know, even if it's unconventional of them seeing each other, at least they able to put eyes. As many of families during COVID, they had to visit their loved ones in a nursing home or do drive-bys and stuff like that. You get creative. So we see that they in the house getting it together. Now, it could be because of COVID shut everything down. But did y'all peep? It wasn't no dag on um professional decorators you remember when he first said oh his budget was any anywhere between one and one million i ain't see not near one interior decorated and near getting nothing together it's dumb putting their heart you know sweating tears to it now like i said it could have been because of covid but i don't know i don't know i think scott got some shit up his sleeve that we don't know about and i don't think scott got what he said he has i, I, I i'm just saying the house don't look too bad. Like, we seen it in a disarray or whatever when she first came in. That's because he a slob. And he's, he a slob. But since they cleaning it up a little bit, the house don't, it, the house has potential. I, I, it has potential. I can see it being a real nice house. They, you know, do some nice decorating, you know, 
making you know a you know a family home i can see it, it it looked like it has potential to be a really nice house anyway so his whole thing is he's trying to forge this meeting between them because he was like everything seemed to be going good you know we get in the house you know together she was able to see Lindsay grace he was like and hopefully we can get some intimacy that's all he worrying about is hitting it that's all scott worrying about is hitting it and scott if you really thought she was going to come and give you some poontang in that nasty ass house i don't know who the hell you thought you was <laughs> i don't know what you thought you was doing with that i would have been scared be a bug or something would have crawled up my ass like that's how gross it looked when they first showed their house to us so we do see Lindsay talking to Lindsay Grace. They having like a nice little mother and daughter moment. Lindsay, I mean, Molly Grace really, really do miss Lindsay. And, you know, she just want Lindsay to not go back to jail. And Lindsay tells us that she had Molly Grace at 15. She got with the baby father at 14, had her, got pregnant at 15. And I'm like, oh, you was real young and fast. You know, like she took on a fast life. You know, from her getting pregnant so young, her being in a full-blown relationship young, to her getting arrested so young. So, everything just, she she lived a very fast life. So, she was taken away because she went to jail. Her um, daughter father, when she went to jail, basically went MIA on the daughter. So, she was abandoned by not one, but two parents. And at least Lindsay did acknowledge that I caused that pain on my daughter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you did cause that pain on your daughter. Hopefully, you can stay out of trouble so you can, you know, be a, a, a um, constant figure in her life. Because if you go back to jail and her dad already MIA, that girl going to be damaged. She going to be real, real damaged. And like the, her um, Lindsay mom slash grandma was saying, like, listen, I want her to stay out of trouble. I feel like, you know, Scott might be a good influence on her. He was, She said, but, you know... It's hard for somebody that's been away from the real world for four years. So, basically, mom's saying, I'm going to see how this goes. We're going to take this day by day. That's where I got from that. Listen, all I'm saying is I want the best for them only because it's a little child egg state. If, if Scott can um, give her stability, let, let him, um, I hope she can stay with Scott. I don't see her being with Scott, but who knows? So, now we have Chevelle and Quaylen. Chevelle um, arranged for Quaylen to meet with her pastor, you know, because he helps with, you know, men getting out of prison, help them transition and things like that, which I think was a good resource um, um, for Quaylen. So it was nice that Chevelle was able to um, make that happen. And like she said, she was just happy that he was receptive to it. So um, when Chevelle... When the pastor kind of excused Chevelle and uh, Mayela to the the the, the playroom, he was had a chance to talk to Quaylen, you know, one on one. So he basically was asking him like, what was some of his, you know, um, ch challenges or issues that he experienced in now? And Quaylen basically told him like, listen, he was like, I'm I'm just fresh out at the being, you know, being in prison for twelve years. I'm smack dead into a serious relationship he was like when you in jail you stagnant you know what i mean he was like out here everything moving you gotta he was like you need money how you gonna find money you gotta get a job how you gonna get a job you gotta apply for the job is they gonna take me and like the and the pastor was like yeah because you got that scarred letter on your back so he he asked him which was very telling to me he asked him who is your biggest cheerleader? Who is your biggest supporter out here? And Quayline said his mother. He didn't say my mom and Chevelle. He said my mom. And I'm like, mm, that's that was interesting. Like, I, I I know your mom is your biggest cheerleader as far as that, but Chevelle seems to be, you know, neck and neck with her. So the fact that he didn't say she, Chevelle as well had me like, oh, okay, this one, this won't be some stuff here. And then he was, he, he said, that's another thing. He was like, my mom don't want me here. My family is in Texas. He was like, but Chevelle is here. And he was conflicted about that. So the pastor basically said, and his like affectionate and stuff like that. He was like, it seems like um, Quaylen don't want to really go forth, you know, go full throttle in so many words, excuse me, with Chevelle 
because you know it's some things about him that he you know need to work out and he don't want to you know he basically don't want to like disappoint in the situation but he got to be true to who he is and my thing is well he, she will already be disappointed because Quaylon Quaylon and, and I'm paraphrasing a little wrong because I kind of forgot exactly what he said. But, I'm, you know, it, it was it was basically to that point. Like, Quaylon got a... Quaylon needs to be worrying about Quaylon at this particular point. And he don't... You know, he in something with Chevelle that he may not want to be in. You know what I'm saying? So, it's not Chevelle's fault because you chose to want to be in a relationship with her. You knew exactly what she wanted. You said that that's what you wanted. So it it's kind of selfish of you to now, you know, coming home and you want some other shit. Because you had to know that it was going to be hard for you to adjust. You've been away for so many um, years and have arm robbery on your jacket. That's not, you know what I'm saying? So maybe you should have not been spoon feeding her all the shit that she wanted to hear and like tell her like listen i like you i want to be with you but let's slow walk this because i gotta see how i'm going to transition when i'm out there in the new world and i don't want to put an extra you know extra burden or stress on me you know we're having to worry about a family because i ain't, i'm not sure if i'm gonna be right then if she proceeded with the, you know, talking to you, whatever, at least she would have known where you was coming from. You was making her think y'all was going to get married and all this old crazy crap. So we see them in the car. They left from the, um, from, the, you know, meeting with the pastor and Chevelle asking him all these questions, wanting to know all this information. And he shut and down. He was like, I don't want to talk. She was like, oh, why you don't want to talk? He said, because I, I'm not a talkative person. Well, that's not true because when you was in prison, you said you very outgoing. He was like, listen, I don't want to talk. Chevelle keep going on. She's sitting up here saying how, you know, he didn't say good morning. He was like, listen, that was 7 o'clock in the morning. She was like, well, you said good morning to uh, my Ela. He was like, I was trying to brush my teeth, get myself together. He was like, you mad because I ain't say good morning. He was like, day was early. And then she was like, well, when you was in prison, you ain't had no problem with calling me and talking to me, you know, in the morning. See, she getting that shit twisted. She want him to be on the same time that he was on when he was in prison. And in prison, you ain't got nothing else going on but waking up, going to the mess hall to eat, and maybe going to go work out. He ain't had nothing else going on. So, of course, he was going to be on your line. Of course, he was going to be talking to, to you because he ain't had shit else going on. You, you was something to help pass his time. So that's where they be getting it twisted because when they be, because I'm, I'm seeing this a lot on the show, um, even from previous seasons, a lot of people are like, well, you was doing this when you was in jail. They on the free world now. It's, they not in jail no more. They not in jail. Just like you can't just talk to him every five minutes because you got shit to do. Like, come on. So he was like, listen, I don't want to talk no more, Chevelle. And Chevelle, <laughs> Chevelle got like real salty or whatever. And he shut it down. They was a little silent for the rest of the ride. So they pulled up. My Ela was like, oh, we at the house. You can tell she was happy as shit to get out of that day going car. Chevelle was heated. I don't know where they're going to go from, from um, go how, how they're going to proceed from here. Because apparently they are still together. But I don't know. I think he going to be. I don't know. He might. I don't know. I don't know. To be continued with them. That's all I'm going to say. So now we see Tyrese. So we find out Tyrese has been ghosted by Shonda. Shonda hasn't been answering the phone. She hasn't been responding to any emails. Tyrese said that he was checking, you know, social media. He, he didn't come up with anything. So his daughter and granddaughter came over. So his daughter was asking him how things was going and, you know, so on, so on. So he basically told her, you know, what was going on in the situation. And she was like, well, maybe she was just using you. No, I don't think she was using me. How you know she not in jail? She was like, how much money did you send her? He was talking about, I ain't really sending her only like five or ten dollars. You know, dad going, well, you spend more than five or ten dollars on her from time to time. Stop, stop. 
Stop. You just dropped what? At that little stupid boutique when he wore that with them outfits and stuff. How much he spent? Like eight hundred dollars there? Like we're not even about to go there, Tyrese. You know damn well you spent some daggone money. So this daughter was like, Well, she did exactly what we said, you know, said she was going to. He don't want to believe that she played them. You know what I'm saying? Like he wanna believe that maybe she you know jammed up or something wrong where she can't get in contact with him but the daughter she was like it looked like she ghosted um ghosted you and he didn't know what that means so she explained what ghosted was and he was like no um you wrong you wrong she was like i can be she was like but that's what it looked like to me and when the daughter was talking to the producers and stuff she was like she just think her dad is you know, a little embarrassed about the things that he may have did for her and, you know, how, you know, things is playing out now. Yeah, he is embarrassed. He, But his pride won't let him sit up there and say, okay, I got played. So he's still going on with, oh, maybe, you know, something wrong. She got rearrested instead of it. And my thing is if she got rearrested, then you definitely don't want to be with her then. We already know she wasn't into him. She was looking at him when he came in there with that fucking electric blue suit. He was just giving her old, old, old daddy player vibes that she wasn't really feeling. Unless she played you, you was the one giving her the, probably the most money in jail. You took the bait. She kept you online. She needed you for what you, she needed you for. And then she ghosted you. And that was it. And you need to listen to your dad going kids because they telling you right. They telling you right. They seeing what you too blind to see at the moment. But that daughter, I couldn't take my eyes off them long ass lashes she had on. I was like, I know they got to be heavy. They just was like, I don't know. Look like, I don't, I don't know. They just looked extremely too heavy for her eyelids. But that's all for Tyrese and um, Shonda's story. Like I said, Shonda did exactly what everybody else knew she was going to do. Even the kids knew she was going to do it. Tyrese was the only one too stupid to, um, to see it. Now, I'm curious to see how this is going to play out. If she going to reach back out to him and try to get some more money or what. Okay, so finally we see Heather and Dylan. Heather is one crazy chick. One crazy chick. So they headed to her aunt Diane's house because apparently her apartment flooded two weeks prior to Dylan getting uh, released. So now his parole has been shifted to his her aunt Diane's house. So they're en route to the you know to the house. They finally get to the house. Is her aunt Diane, her aunt Stacy. Dylan is a nice guy. He's very, you know, um, friendly. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and you could tell he was raised with some kind of manners or that's just his, he know how to, you know, maneuver through situations, however you want to call it. Anyway, so he, you know, was sat down with her two aunts. She went in the bathroom. I don't know what she was in there doing. You know, they were talking. Aunt Diane was showing him pictures. Um, Her other aunt Stacy was saying that she's willing to give him a benefit of the doubt. And, you know, he appreciated that. Like he said, I heard a lot about you guys and um, I'm interested in getting to know you guys a little bit better. And he was very appreciative of Aunt Diane letting them stay there because he said, like he said, it's bad enough that um, she's, he said, Heather is lucky that she has um, extended family that actually able to take her in and not alone just her, but her felon fiance. And he write about that shit. Like, and Diane is sick. She on oxygen. You can tell she got like, um, you know, she old. Her skin is fragile because you can see like the little, um, you know, the discoloration in her skin and everything. Like she ain't got time for that aggravation. And Heather got a lot of goddamn um, drama with her. And Heather was sitting up here talking about that's not the ideal place, you know, to be because she want to have sex with him and she can't have sex with him and have an orgasm while Aunt Diane is there and all this old crap. So she comes out the bathroom when he was talking to Di um to Aunt Diane and Aunt Stacy. Well, before that, he was showing them a well, she they were showing him pictures, but he showed Aunt Diane and them a picture of his father. His father was handsome. And Aunt Diane, Aunt Diane was like, How old is him? How old is he? And he was like, I think like 61, 62-ish. She was like, Oh, he's too old for me because they had a little joke saying that I think Aunt Diane like him young. 
So heaven comes in and I don't feel good. I need to lay down. Can you come? Like give like drama, drama. So he gets up, go, you know, talking to her towards the room. And her whole thing is they monopolizing all your time. You supposed to be spending time with me. You out there with them. Blase, blase, blase. My thing is, yes, you've been you've been waiting for him for five years. Yes, you want to spend time with him. But you guys are imposing on someone else's home. Why can't he spend an hour to get to know them? Why do you think it's wrong for I, Diane, to get a feel of him? He just coming out of jail. This is her home. She's sick. She ain't vulnerable. She should be in there able to talk to him, get a feel, so she can be safe and comfortable in her house, and you going to try to yank him away and make it seem like she doing something wrong and, and make it seem like he's doing something wrong because your you're, you're, you're crazy ass wanting all this um attention. Make it make sense because it ain't making sense to me. You should want her to get comfortable with him. What? Like, oh, my goodness. She pissed me off. So they in there, she's talking about, I just got to get out of here, just in the oven, all this old stuff. So he was like, okay. So he comes out and said, you know, I don't know when we're going to be back. Maybe today, you know, maybe tomorrow, the next day, and today, we're just going to, you know, cruise around town, have fun, you know, and, you know, be, get, the, you know, bond with each other. So I, Diane, I, Diane was like, okay. She was like, what am I supposed to do with the parole officer? She was like, well, you don't have to worry about that. He shouldn't come around, um, but I'll take care of it. So he leaves, you know, he putting everything in the car. So she's in the, um, you know, kitchen doing the dishes, Heather. So Aunt Diane was like, you know what, you really, I think he's going to be a real good boy for you. You know, she was like, well, thanks, Aunt Diane. She was like, but you're going to have to let go of the jealousy. For some reason, that flipped Heather. What are you talking about? You don't think that I have a right, you know, to demand some time from him after I've been spending five years waiting on him? He should be able to, you know... Spend some time with me without y'all getting in the middle of that. And Diane was like, so they start going back and forth. She, Heather took it too so took it so far. I Diane so I get her ass out of there. She was like, cause I don't need the aggravation. And um, I Stacy was like, yeah, you don't. And Diane can barely breathe, and you want to be arguing and yelling with her. And then she storms out and telling him, oh, we got to get out of here. I'm just sick of it. And Diane yelling at me. Well, you made her yell. You think she's trying to risk yelling at you to go to, to get, get a minute to ICU um, as bad as her breathing is? No, you're crazy. You're batshit crazy. And I don't see Dylan staying with you much longer because he already said he risking a lot. Um, we're even leaving Aunt Diane's house on his first day because Aunt Diane is where his parole and his parole office can pop up any day. And you willing to risk that just because you, man, he's spending time with two old, with, with, with an old lady? Come on, make it make sense, Heather. Make it make sense. That's all I got for this episode. If you guys like the content, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to holler at your girl.